She's played many parts, model, actress, singer, wife and mother. She's had her ups and downs, but Twiggy's ability to consistently reinvent herself has always made her a survivor. Recently, the world's first supermodel has stepped back into the limelight and she shows no sign of slowing down. Using her image and iconic status, she's helped turn around the fortunes of an ailing high street giant and regularly commutes to Hollywood to star alongside Tyra Banks on the US hit show, America's Next Top Model. Along with many other people, Twiggy's world was turned upside down in the 60s when as a 17-year-old schoolgirl called Leslie Hornby, she packed her bag and set off across the Atlantic. In 1967, Twiggy visited the United States for the first time. When she landed at Kennedy Airport, she was greeted with an incredible fanfare. She was the Brit sensation that everyone wanted to see. When she began, what I remember is that all the girls wanted to be her, and all the guys wanted to take care of her. So, what's better than that? I met her when she was 15, nearly 16, and she was Twigs. Um, we just called her Twigs at home. I never, ever have called her Leslie, ever. I met Twiggy, I suppose, about 30 years after I'd first heard of her. And since I'd been technically in love with her for about 15 years, I took the opportunity to ask her to marry me. It went down quite, quite badly with my girlfriend for five years, and not that well with Twiggy. My wife at the time um, was flicking through Vogue and said, hey, take a look at this model, she's special. And lo and behold, there was this unique form gracing the play pages of Vogue, and I thought, you know, she is special. And usually when somebody is iconic, they are, darling, how are you? And she's just like, I'm just a mum, Tyra, I'm just a mum. You know, she's just a normal woman with an amazing history. Twiggy was born Leslie Hornby on the 19th of September 1949 in Neasden, North London. Her father was a carpenter and shop fitter for many stores, including Marks and Spencer. Her mother worked in Woolworths. While still at school, Twiggy got a Saturday job in a local hairdresser's, Mr. Vincent's. It was at this time she discovered Viva, the boutique frequented by London's dedicated followers of fashion. I worked at the hairdressers my sister worked at. She got me, I used to wash hair and sweep hair and hand up pins and things like that. And I'd get pocket money. And me and the other junior, Kay, who she was, I was a mod at that time, I must have been 14, 15. Uh, we used to save up our pocket money for about four or five weeks and then we'd rush down to the new, the new boutique Bieber, which was on, it was the first one on Abingdon Road, and we'd have an hour lunch break and we'd get on the tube, go one stop, run down the street, run down Abingdon Road and buy a dress because you could buy, um, you know, a dress for two, three pounds. And, and it really was the first um, shop in London, I think, that sold kind of boutique clothes, clothes to teenagers. The, all the other stores, you, you kind of went with your mum. Twiggy also met a young man at Mr. Vincent's called Tony Davies. Tony's brother Nigel was a regular face in the salon. They all became close friends, and Nigel assumed the role of Twiggy's manager. I was, as I say, a Saturday girl. And this um, rather fat, flamboyant, slightly flash guy used to come and pick his brother up, and that was Justin. And he was Nigel Davis, but he changed his name to Justin to Bill Nerve. I suppose it sounded a bit more flash than Nigel Davis. I used to have a Saturday job at a hairdresser's where my sister worked, and Justin's brother worked. And, um, you know, he knew I wanted to be a model. And one day he came over to see my sister over here. And he, Justin gave him a lift, and I met Justin. And I just started to go out with him. And he had a car, which was very um, flashy in those days. And um, so we started kind of dating, and it was through a friend of his who worked on a, a big magazine called Woman's Mirror. And I went along, because she'd seen me, and she said, I'm gonna tell, I think you should be seen by the editress. So we, I went to see this editress, and she just said, 
you know, you're very tiny. I'm not sure you could be a model, but you might. She says you've got an interesting face because I was still, I was already painting my eyes because we didn't have makeup artists in those days. So not not for school, but at weekends I'd do my eyes. It'd take me about three hours, and I'd have three pairs of false eyelashes and draw on those what became known as twiggies under my eyes. She said, "You've got an interesting face. I'd like to get you photographed, but your hair's a mess because I had very long hair." So she sent me to this very posh hairdressing salon called the House of Leonard in Mayfair. The salon wanted some pictures of their creation, so they asked top fashion photographer Barry Natigan to take a few shots. In 1966, a hairdresser whom I worked with and for phoned to ask me if I would see a girl that he wanted to bring into the modeling world. Supposedly, Leonard rang Barry and said, I've got a, there's a young girl in here just having her hair done. I think she's got an interesting face. She's never been photographed before. I've got an idea for a haircut. 